All right, Steve Weiss from NFL Network joins you today for a one-on-one. And Steve, uh, this is by far the most festive background I've ever had during the interview, but it, it's a fitting for the suit that you have on. So thank you for joining oh, come me on, today. man. No, no, no. The, 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 Vikings, the Vikings white and purple, you know, you blend right in with a lot of these exotic colors, and I'm sure you're glad. What, it's probably going to be, what, 35, 45 back home in the yeah, Minneapolis? Yeah, we get back. When we get back, it'll be snowing. So. You remember, I, I grew up there. I know yep. how cold it can get deep in the year, so I know how it is. Yeah, but by the time football season gets rolling around, it'll be a little bit warmer, and, and it's looking like with this new regime that mm -hmm. things are starting to heat up. You see some of these free agent signings and a few guys coming in for visits. So for you, how how, what have you learned through this process of how these guys like to operate with the, the moves that they're making? Well, well, first, it's very analytical. I mean, you, you see some of the things, how patient they've been. When you're at a time when you're hurrying, right, you're the coaches, Kevin O'Connell is trying to fill out his staff. They're mm -hmm. trying to really get their personnel in place and scout players and see what direction they want to go in with the personnel they have, right? Mm -hmm. So they're building around Kirk Cousins. But the patience and the aggression they showed mm -hmm. in getting Sedaria Smith, who we all thought was going to Baltimore, that was a very clever move. Mm -hmm. So... They clearly understand their window is to win now, mm -hmm. right? The Kirk Cousins window. Let's let's kind of explain it like that. While Kirk's playing at a good level, to win with him now and to go out and get players that can help them win, supplant that with some good draft picks. You know, Quasi's mm -hmm. got to go out there and, and get some good players mm -hmm. in that first draft to establish short-term and long-term support mm -hmm. for Kirk and then whoever replaces him in the coming years. What is the balance between, uh, quote unquote, running it back with some of the similar guys versus development? Like, how do you how do you balance that when trying to, uh, I guess, like Mark Wolf said, we want to be a competitive team in the NFC North. So how do you balance that? Those those two things? Well, you're not exactly running it back when you have a coaching change. Mm -hmm. I mean, that that's the big part of it. You're trying to retool yeah. some of the pieces you have. But every coach wants personnel mm -hmm. to match what he wants to do on both sides of the ball. And that's something you're seeing. Defensively here, they're going to an odd front, you know, a 34 front instead of that four-man scheme that Zimmer like to run. So you've got to get personnel that fits that. That means you've got to have some hard rock outside linebackers like Zedaria Smith, mm -hmm. one guy at least who can cover on the corner, and somebody who can play that good free on the back end. Um, and then with Kevin O'Connell, they're going to have that zone run scheme. They're going to keep that mm -hmm. part in place, but also some of the things they have at receiver. Mm -hmm. You know, that's going to give Kirk some options, some easy pre-snap reads, catch-and-run type of stuff. So you've got to find personnel along the offensive line, at receiver, running back, that can really supplant those types of things. So, again, you're not exactly running it back. This isn't the Buccaneers running it back with Tom Brady mm -hmm. and all those players. So there's going to be a little change, but it's a retooling. Do you think just with the offensive side of the ball, understanding how Kevin likes to run his mm -hmm. offense, do you think, you know, the inside zone run scheme or quick passes or using tight ends or receivers to block, do you think that – puts less pressure on an offense or more pressure on like an interior offensive lineman? It puts more pressure on an offense for the skill players okay. to do more than maybe they typically have done, okay. right? Think of the 49ers. Think of the Rams, who are, who are really good at it right now. The Rams, are receivers do block. Mm -hmm. You see Cooper Cup coming in the slot and Jack Hammer and outside linebackers. Um, you look at the running backs. They're asked to pick up in protection. All running backs are but also catch the ball in the run game. Dalvin Cook is the ideal. I was just going to ask you that. The yeah. <laughs> ideal player for what he, he should have a big year. Mm -hmm. You don't necessarily need the big, huge mammoth movers on the offensive line, but athletic guys who can get there and get to the next level, but they have to play on a thread. Mm -hmm. If you have three guys working and one guy slipping, it does not work. Mm -hmm. But everything else working. So this is an offense that has to function as one. So what does that mean for Dalvin Cook, right? Because we see a lot of, you know, these new offenses like the L.A. Chargers, like where they use Austin Eckler in the passing game. So we know Dalvin Cook is a good runner downhill, but do you expect him to be used more in the passing game a little bit more or still play to his strengths? No, he's going to be used in the passing game a okay. little bit more. They're going to play to his strengths, but I think his strengths include getting him in the open field. That is the whole premise of this offense. Like the 49ers, when they had all their injuries at running back, mm -hmm. what do they do? They move Debo Samuel, a wide receiver, mm -hmm to that position. This is all about finding ways to get playmakers the ball in their hands in open space, but they're going to have to also break a tackle, mm -hmm. right? This is an offense where you've got to make somebody miss or break a tackle because somebody is likely to be uncovered on a certain play. That's why right. Dalvin Cook <laughs> is so good for this scheme. I mean, putting a running back on the corner, I think any offensive coordinator, that's a, that's, a, that's an offensive coordinator's dream and a running back's dream to be one-on-one -on -one with a corner. But speaking of our corners, we, we got to build that up. Yep. How, do, how do we do that? Because you, you, get, you get some pass rushers, and I know that marries well with the DB position, but how do you continue to build our cornerback positions? Is that in the draft, or is that via free agency? They'll be there with the, with the Vikings drafting in the first round. I think that's got to be kind of a target spot. 
Look, I worked with uh, Ed Donatel when okay. I covered the Falcons, when he was the D.C. there. Now, back then, he was playing a four-man front, mm. but they had to have a corner who could cover. Back then, it was D'Angelo Hall, oh. who was a heck of a player. He mm. was physical, could get his hands on guys. You see what they did when he was at Denver. Look at some of the corners that they had there. So I would expect the Vikings, if they want to go defense first, to look at some of these long, rangy corners who will come up and hit mm. if they want to have an opportunity. Lastly, right now and i know it's going to continue to build and we're talking in late march early april do the vikings have enough to win the nfc north with the way that it's going right now well first off with Devonte adams out of the division <laughs> i think it's wide open yeah i mean we can say what we want okay that the packers have aaron Rodgers, great quarterback they've got great players on both sides of the ball but if the vikings can play well on that thread mm -hmm. right I, th I think that's hugely important they have an opportunity because when i talk to coaches who face the vikings i remember all the close games they lost oh. last year right they're like, that team can win. Like, that is a very good football team. Mm -hmm. They can win. And it's just the difference of winning late. Mm -hmm. And that's one thing you've seen. Rams, 49ers, yeah. teams that play in the scheme with the playmakers, you've got to have a playmaker who can make a play late. That's the one thing that have really thrived in this type of offense. So that's going to be the difference right here. Well, the Vikings are looking for playmakers. We've got a lot more opportunities to get playmakers, whether that's in free agency or in the draft. But in the meantime, make sure you're following Steve Weish on Twitter, at Weish89, or looking at him on NFL Network every single day. Appreciate your time today, you Steve. You got it, man. Appreciate you. Yes, sir.